Hello and welcome to One on One on Plus TV Africa. Here with me in the studio is the founder and chief executive officer of AgroRight, a premier digital agricultural platform based in Lagos, to your CIO daily. He says he is determined to achieve food security in Africa, beginning from Nigeria by engaging and improving the quality of lives of at least one million smallholder farmers by the year 2029. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you, Irina. Such a Thank pleasure you. having you in the studio. Thank All you. right then, so let's get straight to it. How did you tell us a bit about AgroRight okay. and how it came about? Okay. Um, AgroRight uh, is a technology-driven platform. What we do is we empower small uh, small uh, farmers by giving them access to finance, access to uh, advisory services, and of course, access to premium uh, markets, which is very key in ensuring that um, they end up profitable because the average uh, smallholder farmer only cares about what he or she would uh, eat. Um, they don't really have the, 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 the financial know-how to, mm -hmm. to, to be profitable, to be able to take care of their family. So we use technology to ensure that they get um, value for whatever uh, efforts they put in yeah, we're, we're farming. All right, so from what you've said so far, what I hear is agri-tech. Sometimes people believe that they, may, they need to have a bit of an ICT background to drive such an initiative. Did you, at the time when you started, have any background in IT? How are you able to incorporate what you do and then, you know, the IT space of it, bridging that gap? Yeah, I've, I've always had the technology, uh, I've always had the agricultural background. Mm, tell um, us about it, it first. Yeah. <laughs> So I grew up um, in an agricultural setting where uh, I saw firsthand the challenges faced by uh, smallholder farmers. So um, it's, 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 it was really challenging for me back then because they put in so much effort. Some of them, for instance, poultry farmers, you have some poultry farmers waking up as early as 1 a.m. Wow. to feed uh, 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 broilers and all of that. And at the end of the day, nothing to show for it. They can't pay. Uh, their, their bills, they can't pay house rent, they can't pay uh, school fees for their kids and all of that, which is, 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 is very touching. So I had to go deep into, okay, what is the cost of this? Why are you guys putting so much effort with little or nothing, turn. you know, to show? And that, that, that was what uh, gave me the passion to actually um, um, empower quite a number of farmers while I was serving in Benue State, which is uh, regarded as the food basket of Nigeria. Indeed. So I gathered quite a number of farmers and I said, okay, what do you need? You know, I had to hear them first, gather their challenges and mm. started, you know, uh, I, I started with building a team and looking for how we can actually provide solutions to them. All right, so from what I hear you say as well, you didn't just launch into the agri space because you felt, oh, let me be part of the bandwagon that are into the agricultural space. You actually found a challenge and wanted to prefer solutions to it. Definitely. So in, in terms of integrating technology to it, um, tell us more about that bit. Okay, so the first thing is to onboard the farmers. So we onboard the farmers um, via platform or via agents which are spread across uh, the country. Of course, we train the farmers. Um, we ensure that even before we start farming, we, 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 we have a sort of MOU or an agreement with off takers. I'm talking about premium buyers. Mm -hmm. So that gives the farmers this confidence that, oh, at the end of this journey, I'm getting something that is rewarding. So they go into the farms motivated, they go into the farms ready to achieve. And then we support them with um, IVRs where we tell them uh, uh, what their soil content is, when to apply fertilizers, when to hold on and all of that. And at the end of the day, you discover that they achieve more yield at less period. And it's, you know, we just continue to do that on and on and on. And we've been onboarding farmers and it's, it's, it's been an interesting journey so far. So do you also help them in terms of um, high yielding seed varieties to ensure that their yield per hectare is a lot more than what they used to produce before? Definitely. What we part have, of you know, the entire value chain do you cover? Yeah. Um, from the seedlings, from the uh, preparation down <coughs> to selling off to the off taker, mm -hmm. we support them all the way. All right. So in terms of the general agricultural sector here in Nigeria, what's your take on it being, you know, you've been 
in this space for quite um, some time? First of all, I would like to appreciate the current administration. They've been very supportive in terms of uh, pushing out um, um, agricultural investments, uh, supporting mm -hmm. smallholder farmers, because smallholder farmers actually make up over 80% of what we produce here in Africa, particularly in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So they've been very supportive. Uh, definitely, there's a whole lot of uh, room for improvement in terms of uh, infrastructure, in terms of um, logistics, and um, of course, in terms of uh, our financial integration for these farmers, because mm -hmm. not so many of them want to have a bank account or whatever they just want their <laughs> money cash and um we, we've been we, we've tried um a, a whole lot of time to 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 explain why we are doing this and that's why we take them through the training first before going into the farm so that at the end of the day they don't just end up how they used to and they become profitable then another thing we we, we are doing it we are aligned with sustainable development goals yes, uh, go one go two 10 and 12 which our major goal and focus is goal two which says zero hunger, hunger. you know and uh, we've been driving that with a lot of zeal and passion and we can see improvements uh, so far we've been able to reach uh, almost 5,000 smaller farmers in a few months and um, they are all doing well and our aim is to we 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 pay them per performance and which is a whole lot of motivate uh, a motivational factor for them and we are getting more farmers. We've done poultry, we've done maize, we've mm -hmm. done uh, soybean. Uh, currently, we, we, we are going soon to um, um, honey uh, okay. in those states. Okay. We have quite a number of uh, beekeepers already that are undergoing training, and it's been a fruitful journey. Now, uh, one thing that I find quite a number of uh, farmers or the more literate farmers experience is their ability to communicate effectively with the local farmers. How are you able to handle this with the farmers that you work with? You say you've empowered about 5,000 farmers. Yes, um, we have what we call extension officers and um, also with the aid of IVR uh, technology we've been able to communicate with these farmers in their indigenous language because local integration for these farmers is actually one of our major uh, uh, value propositions uh, to them. So we have um, um, extension officers that actually stay with them. Apart from the normal training that we have, the extension officers stay with them throughout the process and then feeding us back with reports. And of course, we do go there once in a while to also see what's happening. And they've been very responsive. Yeah. Interesting. All right, then let's just hold on for a bit. Uh, we'll take a quick break now. You're still watching One on One on Plus TV Africa. All right, thank you. You're still watching One on One on Plus TV Africa. We've been speaking with Toyosi Ayodele. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Agro Right. All right, then, nice to have you back still. Thank you. I... While, we, while the government is doing their bits in terms of empowering farmers we still have the issue of um, food we still have food security challenges in the country why is that why haven't we been able to bridge this gap um, food insecurity is a global problem and that's why uh, the united nations just like i said earlier we are focused on uh, goal two which is zero hunger the united nations have um, specifically listed 17 sdg goals and if you'd look at these goals, you discover that um, about 50% of these goals are actually channeled towards um, um, eliminating poverty. And where does poverty start from? It starts from the stomach. Once uh, you are hungry, come on, that means uh, you can do perhaps nothing. So it's, 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 it's a global challenge and um, it's one step at a time. So the way to go is simply to focus on these smaller farmers because if the smaller farmers are producing over 80% uh, of uh, what we are eating and because of, uh, they don't have that capacity technically, they don't have that um, 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 finance to do logistics and all of that, you discover that even after production, they lose about 40% of their produce due to the fact that they don't have the capacity to run the logistics and all that. And they have to go through middlemen. And you know what happens with middlemen? Middlemen will ensure that the, the, you know, the middlemen will rip them off 
their all their efforts. And if you are not going through the middleman, that means you are you are you are ready to to account for the loss. So that is where AgroRight comes in. We are connecting the smallholder farmers directly to their off takers. So they are getting value for whatever they are producing. And how are you able to convince these off takers or your investors? I believe that you also have room for investment. But how are you able to convince these um, investors that, oh, this is a very profitable business because when it comes to farming anything can happen and I believe some of your farms should be up north where we have issues of insurgence yeah. we'll still yeah. talk about that but how are you able to convince them that at the end of the day they would still get their you know profits back yeah. and their capital yeah it's quite interesting when you know we we open for instance uh, a farming investment you know before we do that we do at least three to four months of hard work mm -hmm. so where do we start from first of all we seal um, an agreement with the off-taker, saying that, okay, guys, we are ready to go to the farm at this period. At this period, expect the produce at this particular uh, price. So after then, we embold the farmers, we train the farmers, and then we then bring in our insurance partner. We have at least two major insurance uh, uh, partners in the country that, that, that's working with us. So they also go to the farm and ensure that, okay, before we actually take off, everything is secured. I'm talking about the land, just like you said earlier, insurgency challenges and all of that, because no one would want to make loss. And I mean, I want to go into business for the <laughs> sake of making profit. Profit, definitely. So before coming out to say, okay, guys, we're opening this particular farm, uh, it's, you'll be investing this per unit for, for, for a particular uh, period, you know, there's a whole lot of due diligence. Our financial partners, too, we check the financials. Is this reasonable or not? Then we also have an agreement with the farmers. Okay, farmers, when we are done with this project, this is what you, you will be having. And all this process, we also, we also run it through not just the investors, but the off-takers. And we've been able to achieve nothing less than 95% uh, uh, purity measures on all our farm produce simply because of the, the, the amount of um, um, attention we pay to details and es most especially to nutritional and um, 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 the biological content of this farm produce. Now, uh, in terms of protecting these farmers themselves, because you can't be everywhere at definitely, the same time. Definitely. And some people have tied their monies to the success of the business. Yeah. Security-wise, what measures have been put in place? Because I've spoken to a party farmer before, and he said to me that some days before harvest, headsmen came and knocked the whole place upside down. And the entire 10 hectares of land, it was all gone, you know. So what measures do you use such that if people want to get involved in this kind of business, they would also, you know, make use of such? In this business, there are major stakeholders. So you don't just go to a community to look for farmers and then you engage them with um, um, fertilizers, um, um, seedlings, and all of that. No. Of course, you engage the community leaders. Usually, we bring them in as cooperatives. So they already have a standing structure. All we just need to do is improve on that structure and ensure that we've been able to tile all loose ends. Okay. And that's why we bring in uh, different partners in terms of extension officers, insurance uh, uh, companies and all of that. Mm. And um, when it comes to the off-takers, right, what has been the success story so far? Um, there's, no, there's no perfect structure. It's still work in progress. Um, of course, we have um, some few off-takers where even before getting value for, even after signing, you know, MOUs and all that, you still have to go through some bit of hassle before uh, um, getting value for the farmers and of course the, the, the investors. But to, 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 to be sincere, it's, it's, it's been good reports uh, most times and for the defaulters, um, we find a way to manage the, 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 the situation and that's why we also have um, legal partners too that also help us with um, cases like this. So do we say that because this is an agri-tech uh, driven initiative, then issues regarding infrastructural deficit that the country is currently facing is mitigated? Let me give you an instance. Like, let's say for instance, we have an off-taker in Ibadan, and then we have a farm in Kaduna. You know, you still need to take the produce to the off-taker. 
So if the roads are not good, imagine a produce that does not need to stay more than 24 hours in a truck. And because of bad road, because the truck too is not well serviced or something, you know, it, it gets there after two or three days. What do you think will happen to the quality of that produce? Mm. So um, it, it's, it's a work in progress. We'll always implore the government to, to help us with um, these um, uh, infrastructural challenges and even storage systems. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, we get into some co communities and then we find some farmers that will say, oh, guys, even before we even start this project, we have some of this produce. Some are good, some are not so good. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the one that is good, how can you help us? Store. Um, of take this ones okay. before we even start a new project. Mm. Sometimes you find um, cassava yes. that has, you know, overripe and is already looking like yam and all that, very big, simply because they don't have off takers. And the middlemen are coming with ridiculous prices. prices. So we also have those sort of agreements with off takers so in such a way that. that still need to be. Yeah, in such, in such a way that when we identify such farmers, we still help them of take that produce. And that's actually what gave us that motivation to actually open up a subsidiary, which is called Foodies.ng. Now what Foodies does is it communicates directly with the farmers, those ones that have ready produce to sell and helps them sell this produce at competitive prices. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right then, so let's um, go on a quick break. You're still watching One on One on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching One on One on Plus TV Africa. All right then. So uh, let's speak a bit about value addition because I reckon our products would be of you know more value price-wise if it's processed. Tell tell us about it. And is there anything that has been done to improve this particular bit? Um, I'm particularly happy about um, the fact that. Um uh, we are now having more processing plants here in Nigeria, and not just processing plants, but I'm talking about processing plants that are ISO uh, certified. Now, what this does is that it um, helps us um, get more people employed, and then, of course, which would add value at the end of the day to the economy, because most of the agricultural produce that we actually export actually gets processed then they bring it down here again and sell it and, and, and then they get to sell it at a higher price which is definitely not good for our economy so tell us what was the border closure as of december how did it help farmers like you yeah it's it's, it's been in, interesting because um um now processing companies now need to look inward they now respect and value the smaller farmers that okay these guys are actually doing a whole lot. And you, ha you have some, 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 some companies even um, um, having what you, what you call uh, clustering farming, where they even gather smaller farmers themselves. We have some even helping out with logistics. We have some even helping out with um, 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 storage uh, facilities and all that. So it's been very interesting. And um, it's, 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 it's good for us to know that we can actually make something from, from by, by ourselves, use it by ourselves, and at the end of the day, still add um, so much value to, to what we are doing. So local integration is the way to go now, yes. moving forward. Yes. And uh, are we ready for international exports? I would say for now, we have a whole lot to achieve looking inwards. We can go the China way. We can, we can, we can feed ourselves first. We can make ourselves self-sufficient first before looking outward, you know, because that's very key. Because at the end of the day, um, most of this, this, this produce will add more value if we actually process them here in Nigeria and use them as, 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 as Nigerians, or perhaps in Africa. All right, and this brings me to the bit where you said you really want to at least touch one million smallholder farmers by 2020. This is 2029. 29, yeah. Okay, 2029. Yeah. So, what strategies have been put in place? How how many farmers have we been able to feed yeah. so far? So, um, it's a 10 year project for us. Um, the goal is um, 
we start, of course, here, our own country, Nigeria, which, as I'm talking to you now, we've been able to cover at least 10 states um, after um, adding technology to what we are doing. Um, then we move into West Africa, then into Africa um, as a whole. And we also concentrate on building platform where these farmers can be self-sufficient uh, uh, because uh, it's not just bringing in the numbers. How sustainable is the process? So we've built a platform where farmers are being rated A, B, and C. Now, every farmer is struggling to be on Agorite A because, you know, once you are an A-lister on Agorite as a farmer, you earn more. So they are paid based on performance, and that makes it more sustainable. And um, um, when we are bringing you on board, we are bringing you for a long term. We're not just bringing you in for a project and then you are out. And that's why most of the uh, agreements we sign with these processing companies, we sign it for a long term. So that at the end of the day, these smallholder farmers can actually be commercial farmers that would breed more smallholder mm -hmm. farmers and at the end of the day, improve the economy. Mm. All right then, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Irene. Thank you so much. And that's all on one-on-one -on -one on Plus TV Africa. For more informative and educative conversations of this nature, do follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all on Plus TV Africa.